Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, and welcome to Across the Pitch Extra. My name is Phil Kennedy, and I'm joined by Tony Robinson today for the second edition of Across the Pitch Extra. If you didn't hear last week, what we do with Across the Pitch Extra uh, is we pick one topic. Uh, We set a 15-minute timer. Uh, We talk about that topic for 15 minutes. Once the buzzer sounds, that's it, unless the fourth official adds on a minute or two of uh, injury time, if you will. Uh, and last week, we talked about why we thought the uh, the EFL should be bailed out by the Premier League and, and why it was important. This week, it's a bit of a continuation of that topic in some ways, because it, it really is just the story in the EFL right now. Uh, and that would be a, a couple of bailout plans that, that were proposed have now been tabled. So we're going to go over the two plans that had come out, what was wrong with them, and what we think needs to be done to, to make a bailout happen. Uh, so, uh, Tony, uh, are you ready for me to hit the 15-minute timer? I'm uh, ready and uh, ready and waiting and eager to go, Phil. All right, Tony. Well, thank you for joining me here today. And uh, as always in these episodes, I'm going to let you go first. Uh, so I'm going to start the timer now. Okay, no pressure, Phil, putting me first. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> thanks for that. I think what we uh, I'd just like to touch on is uh, a lot's happened since our last uh, uh, episode of Extra. And we had a couple of solutions uh, that we thought might uh, might be something to look at. Uh, over the weekend, obviously, Project Big Picture was leaked out and and really uh, uh, didn't get a very good reception uh, at, at all. Uh, and it was a supposedly a, pro, uh, uh, a proposal uh, from Liverpool and United. Yeah, uh, I think one, one important point with that to bring in is that Liverpool – is owned by John Henry and the Boston Red Sox group. Uh, United is owned by the uh, the Glazer family, Malcolm Glazer, uh, who are the owner of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Common thread there is they are two American owners uh, that I think they're trying to Americanize the system a bit with that proposal. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons, not, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why it didn't go over uh, or was well received. Uh, but basically, they wanted to drop uh, the Premier League down 18 clubs. Uh, there'd be nine teams that would vote on it, the nine longest teams, which is what obviously would include the big six. Uh, the parachute payments were going to be scrapped, the League Cup and the Community Shield, which, uh, you know, if they were scrapped, I don't think that's the, that big of a deal. But that really is just a, a toss-in, really, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I like the League Cup and the Community Shield, but but that was probably the one thing in there that are like, okay, well, you know, maybe we don't need that as yeah. long as you keep the FA Cup. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's ones that could be cut loose. Um, now the uh, the we're going to put in a, a two hundred and fifty million uh, rescue fund immediately uh, towards the football league. Um, that sounds like it's a great deal uh, uh, and 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 a big. Uh, gesture on their part but basically that's only the money uh, the two of the teams that would re- be uh, received in the premier league so if you're cutting 20 to 18 you're basically cutting that that amount of money so you're really not giving uh, uh, you know a lot away another um, important thing to mention is so it's estimated that the clubs lost 50 million dollars last year due to the games they had to cancel or the ones that were played uh, with no fans and then it's estimated they're going to lose two hundred million this year by playing not in front of fans. So that two hundred and fifty million is really just enough money to cover what they're losing on gate receipts alone. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's just it was a plan that really didn't pass through the vote of the Premier League uh, because it had to go uh, to uh, voted by on by the twenty Premier League members. Yeah, I know Man City was vocal against it. And there was also the FA, I believe, has a uh, a share vote where they can have they can go in and vote against it as well as part of when the uh, Premier League was set up. 
but I, you know, I think there was a lot of teams that uh, uh, were in favor of it, and it really never did get off the ground. Um, and as a result, they uh, they agreed or they said they were going to uh, Premier League was going to um, fund uh, uh, a fifty million dollar bailout uh, towards League One and Two. And lo and behold, we just found out that's uh, that's been voted against. Yeah, I just saw that and I read through it. And so basically, that was fifty million dollars. It was for League One and League Two only. Pounds, you mean fifty million pounds? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fifty million pounds. Uh, but but the the big thing about that was the championship was left out of it. Right now, League One and League Two have said, you know, we're going to stand in solidarity with the championship, which is a big gamble on their behalf because realistically. The $50 million would probably be enough to take care of League One and League Two. That was going to be $20 million in grant money, $30 million in uh, interest-free loans. So some of it was going to have to be paid back. But, but still, that would have been, to me, enough for those tiers. Meanwhile, you have the championship teams where, where a lot of them are sitting on assets that, that could be sold off in the Premier League. is just saying... You know, look, sell off some of your players. You guys are, uh, you know, having enough money. League one, league two is a, a whole different story. Uh, but from, from what I understand, uh, you know, most of the the smaller clubs are are in solidarity in terms of this, at least for now. Yeah, I, and it's it's good to see that the uh, and all the seventy two teams in the EFL is uh, is standing together. Uh, you know, as you say, in solidarity. I think it's um, uh, when you look at if you break down the numbers, uh, you could probably see why. Uh, and although the uh, there was it was no sort of explanation of how the funds would be distributed per, per team, but it's basically like you said, twenty million, uh, and then uh, uh, the thirty million would be in interest fee loans. But if you look at that per uh, team in League One and League Two, it, it's not a it's not a tremendous amount of money. Um, you know, it dep- as I say, it depends how it would be split up. Is it? Is it I mean, here's revenue? what here's what I would say. And now I'm assuming it wouldn't work this way, and that it would be League One teams getting a bigger piece of the pie. But let, let's just say that they did cut it up into 48 equal pieces. That's going to give you about 1.1 billion pounds per team. I know that Andy Holt, uh, he had estimated that, that Accrington's gate receipts run up to about 750K. So, I mean, 1.1 million, that would certainly be enough for, for a team like Accrington, but not for a team like uh, Sunderland, for instance. Yeah, I, I think there's uh, one of the things that when you look at match day revenue, um, there's such a small percentage really from the Premier League, approximately 40%. Of revenue is from match day in the championship is around uh, around 20 21 percent uh, and in the um, uh, league one and league two it's uh, anywhere from 45 to 50 percent which obviously is you know the the bulk of uh, of the revenue for the teams um, and so uh, it is a big sacrifice but um, you know that league one and league two are making uh, in the in in support of the championship and and uh, yeah I've, it's you just hope that that's right the right call and it, is there some um, uh, trickle down effect uh, that the championship will do to League One and League Two as a result of that support? Uh, there's a lot of things to be sorted out. Well, I think part of what the EFL is gambling on is that the British government is putting pressure on the Premier League to to pay this out. I think that the concern would be is that now the government might look and say, okay, well, they offered you $50 million and, and you turned it down. So, you know, figure it out on your own now. Yeah, I, I, you made a valid point just to be, uh, earlier about how uh, it split because um match day expenses for Sunderland would be a lot different than say a match day expenses uh for a league 2 team uh you know that may average a couple of thousand uh, spectators uh, so you'd have to come up with a, a way of uh, uh, uh 
sorting out the uh, funds to to make it fair. As, as, as like I said last week, uh, uh, I think each team should be able to submit their expenses and get reimbursed as opposed mm-hmm. to each team getting a set amount because that wouldn't be fair. I mean, it might it might look, work as well for, uh, you say, for a, a club like Accrington, but you give the same amount to um, uh, a Sunderland or, or, or Portsmouth, uh, it, uh, it doesn't have the same effect. Yeah, I mean, you look at Sunderland with the stadium of light, it takes as much staff to run that as Salford City gets in for a whole match. Yeah. I think one one of the things that uh, as uh, that I've just read re- uh, is about um, it's uh, from former uh, FA chairman David Bernstein. He's proposing, and I think it has some merit, is an independent regulator uh, which would be uh, government backed that would have the authority to um, uh, make football. Um, uh, self-regulate itself and and have the authority to uh, to distribute funds and and make sure that the lower leagues are uh, are looked after. It's it's being backed by a few people in, in uh, relatively high positions. Although one of them is uh, Gary Neville, and I'm not much. Uh, I don't have too much time for Mr. Mm-hmm. Neville, but. Uh, certainly, they've got uh, some uh, some other names in that group that are perfor- uh, are proposing this independent regulator. I, I think it looks like it's a, it's a good idea, and, and hopefully, uh, uh, it's something that um, uh, the government will take a look at. I, I think the government has to get involved to at some point to uh, to make the rules to sort this thing out. Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things that we're forgetting is that time is of the essence here. Is it, this isn't something where they could just kick it around for three months until they figure something out. There's going to be clubs going belly up within the next few weeks. Uh, if, if they don't get so, some relief, you're going to start hearing more stories of players not getting paid, things like that. I mean, this is something where uh, it doesn't just need to get figured out and figured out right. It needs to get figured out quickly. Yeah, and I, there was a, an advisor to uh, uh, for Preston North End said that there could be uh, several uh, uh, clubs in the championship that could be uh, out of business or going into the administration by Christmas. Um, I mean, their expenses are greater because they uh, they played the games in uh, they had a, a project restart too. They had to finish the season, so they have had additional expenses. Granted, they have more revenue for. Um, uh, TV money coming in, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's at that point now where, um, yeah, I think money has to be, like you say, made available. It could be where you could put in uh, a, a small amount and and divvy up some of the funds, funds I should say, right away to the to League One and League Two, on the uh, on the condition that um, when when the say this regulator is set up. That whatever monies you've been received will be taken off uh, off your allotted amount, sort of thing. So you are credited with money received, but give money up front for a sort of a working a, a working capital, sort of so to speak. Yeah, I, I think what you're describing is similar to like the uh, some of the loads that the U.S. government is giving to small businesses to be able to to pay their employees during the pandemic, where they that. The business has to turn around and prove that money went to payroll uh, type of thing. And the the last thing that that I wanted to kind of go over with you because we're we're coming up to the end here. We got a little over two and a half minutes left. Uh, is just to to kind of play the the devil's advocate here. Uh, we did talk about earlier how obviously yeah, Manchester United, Liverpool are owned by American owners. Of course, we talked about Man City. Uh, who are owed by the uh, the oil uh, money in the Middle East. So, I, I mean, you have a lot of foreign owners in the Premier League. Do you think that it's unfair in that sense that the, the British government is kind of leading on the Premier League in this foreign money to bail out the EFL when the, the English government should maybe be looking at, well, you know, this is essentially an English problem and and we're bailing out other businesses. Maybe the the government should be paying this and not the Premier League. Well, I, I, 
there are arguments for the government to do uh, uh, give funds to the uh, uh, the EFL. As like I mentioned last week, they did give money to the National League and also to the arts. Uh, but I think uh, I think uh, if the government can set this regulatory body uh, uh, and and get it established and give it government backing, I think they they will be able to. Uh, make sure that it's self-sufficient in, in the sense that the funds that are going to be uh, paid to lower leagues are coming from football. The ownership question is, is a valid point, but uh, the monies that, uh, the bulk of the money, for example, last year, Burnley got 127 million, uh, close to 100 million, that was from TV deals. So the money is not coming from, per se, ownership per se. What did uh, it remain? Yeah, yeah, the money's coming from, uh, from the t- television deals. Which uh, really, as I say, it's uh, that's 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 going to come in regardless of, uh, of of ownership. It's just whatever is negotiated for that league in the way of uh, uh, TV sponsors. So uh, I'm not sure ownership. I, I think it it played a part in this uh, project uh, uh, big picture that came out uh, because of the two American owners. But uh, in the long run, I think it's the TV money that drives this. Uh, and would be uh, go a long way into solving this problem. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think it was just necessarily the the American owners only. I mean, there's throughout the Premier League, there, there's obviously very few British owners. There, there's a lot of ownership groups also. Uh, but I, I think that the thing that you're looking at, the fourth official has added on one minute. One minute. Most people, when the defender went down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, but just to, uh, to kind of finish up here, uh, I think that, that what you're kind of getting at is what they were getting at is Americanizing the system because with American football, the TV revenue is equally divided among the teams. And I think that's what you're talking about is maybe a percentage of the Premier League's money. Uh, TV revenue should be divided into the lower leagues. Yeah, yeah, you should increase percentage, uh, you know, to the championship, a little bit less for League One and maybe a little less for League Two, but increase the percentages from the, what they are now uh, to an amount that really uh, is functional for the lower leagues and uh, really doesn't impact uh, all that drastically the bottom line of the Premier League. So. I think there is a, a, a solution and the amount you can come up with, uh, and I think that's where the funds are going to have to uh, uh, are going to have to come from. And I think this yeah, is that's the, the final whistle. There you go. <laughs> odd Stanley Odd. Cheers, odd Stanley Tony. Odd. Cheers. <laughs>